Is we, she is she also singing along? Too? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. for yeah. sure, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, we're we're waiting for the point at which she's like, stop singing. I, yeah. I, I, actually, we've already gotten. She that tells a us bit. to stop singing sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, stop. <laughs> Enough. Hi, everyone. Before we get into today's episode, we wanted to take a moment to thank you for listening and watching. Whether you are an OG listener or someone who just recently discovered us, you are the reason we make the show and are able to keep it going. If you want to get to know us even better and have a more premium experience, you can sign up to become an ABG Bestie, which is where you'll get our new audio episodes ad-free, early access and special discounts on merch, special shout outs from us at the end of our show, and a chance to connect with us through our Dear ABG series, which is like our big sister advice column. Check out the description notes of this episode for more details on how to sign up. But if you don't mind the ads and still want to tune in, all our episodes will continue to be available on all platforms. We appreciate you all and thank you so much for the support. My grandma and I don't really speak the same language. She speaks Mandarin and I speak very broken Mandarin, basically only English. This makes it pretty hard for us to communicate. We all love our grandma, but when we can't tell her exactly how we feel, it can be tough. McDonald's wants to help with that. To celebrate the new Grandma McFlurry, McDonald's launched SweetConnections.ai, where you can record a video message for Grandma and have it translated into her native language using AI. How cool is that? You can choose from different languages like Mandarin, Korean, Hindi, and Tagalog. It literally clones your voice, reanimates your face, and translates your words so that you look like you're speaking another language. If only I had this for my Mandarin classes in college. Check it out for yourself. Send your grandma a message at sweetconnections.ai. Then come to McDonald's to treat yourself to the Grandma McFlurry today. Available for a limited time at participating McDonald's, select languages available. Welcome to ABG, Asian Boss Girl, a podcast for the modern day Asian American woman. My name is Helen. I'm Janet. I'm Sam. I'm Casey. <laughs> you told us to sing it. That was so you know? good. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Can we keep that for all of the episodes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our new intro. In okay. case you didn't get that, I'm Sam. And I'm Casey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, usually that's for the audio, but let's keep that for the video too. That was great. Yeah. That was great. In celebration of fatherhood and family, we are so excited to bring Sam and Casey on to today's episode. They are partners in life, fathers to a beautiful daughter, and musically talented artists. <laughs> you may recognize Sam as an OG YouTuber who started his channel in 2011. Oof. Oof. He was one of the first musicians to create a massively successful music-focused YouTube channel with his covers, musical medleys, original songs, and mashups. He's been featured in countless TV and magazine appearances, Hello Oprah Show, oh, man. excuse wow. me, and toured the world. Fun fact, Sam graduated from Yale University with a major in Greek classics mm -hmm. and sang with the Duke's Men of Yale, an all-male a cappella group. Today, Sam's YouTube channel has amassed over 3 million subscribers. Woo. Wow. Sam. Well, that's <laughs> Sam, but we also have Casey. Casey is a pop and classical vocalist, singer, songwriter, and content creator. He has appeared on Saturday Night Live and Good Morning America, performed globally and as a soloist in concert with various Philharmonics, as well as at Radio City Music Hall as a backup vocalist for Adele, Oh my God. <laughs> Casey's videos have over half a billion views on YouTube and hundreds of millions of streams on Spotify. Fun fact also, he also graduated from Yale University and was a member of the Whiff and Poofs, the world's oldest and best known collegiate a cappella group, for which only 14 senior Yale students are selected each year. So that sounds very, very premium. <laughs> <laughs> That's obvious. You both have such amazing backgrounds and you're so well accomplished. We are really excited to have you here today to talk about not only your creative processes, um, but most importantly, how you parent and, you know, what it is like to be girl dads to oh. your beautiful little girl. So thank yes. you so much for being oh here with us God. today. Oh my gosh, we love being girl dads. We it's do. <laughs> no, we could talk about our daughter all day. So how much, how much time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Well, let's first start off because hearing about your shared alma mater experience and also your acapella experience. First of you both weren't in the same acapella group. We so we were ones. actually. We okay. started, so the Whiff and Poofs, which Casey was in, is an all senior group. Okay. And there's a ton of undergraduate groups that you're in from, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, and then all the groups you audition your, at the end of your junior year to mm -hmm. get into the, the group in senior. I didn't do it because I graduated early. Okay. okay. I like to think oh, I would have been oh, a Whiff okay. and Poofs. Okay. Yes. But we, yeah, we yes. met in college acapella. Sam was the hot shot freshman in the Duke's Men. I was a junior. And you know, oh. you're not supposed to like date within your acapella. Group, it's generally it's a, frowned upon. You know, okay. it's like, because you know, if it doesn't end well, it could be bad for 
ICCA finals, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you see Pitch Perfect, the yes, drama. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we made it work. You know? oh, yeah. Okay, so were you both dating back then? Like, how did you first meet? Yeah. And, okay, obviously in the a- acapella group or yeah. in college, but like, what was yeah. that experience like? I mean, like? I guess we first met when I auditioned for the yeah, Dukes Men. Yeah. That was During the meet. audition. Well, actually, so before the auditions, acapella is really intense at Yale so you, right at the beginning of your freshman year there's like a big concert where all the groups kind of put their best mm-hmm. foot forward mm-hmm. because then the singers go and audition and you're kind of auditioning for each other you know all the groups want the best singers and the singers want to get in the groups they want mm-hmm. so Casey was of course the star soloist of the Duke's Man Junior when <laughs> hey. I so I guess I first saw him singing as part of that big concert, I think you sang What a Good Boy or right, something by the Bare yeah. Naked Ladies. So impressive. Everyone loved Casey. He was the best. And I was like, I want to be in that group. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then I auditioned. And then, of course, I got in, you know. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And then we started dating that year. And it's been I'm, oh however God. many hundreds years. Of years. Oh, hundreds yeah. of years. So you've been, you've been dating later. since college. Since, since college. Year. Since 2008. Wow. I know. Oh crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, long time. This is like a, a real life like Glee moment. Like seriously. Yes, yeah, totally. No. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> college sweethearts for sure. Oh my god. And that we yeah, we got our start in that in that crazy college a cappella world. So oh. you know, we were yeah, we've so yeah we can the, weather the high stress of and high that stakes. That is a lot of stress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, in college a cappella, it just feels like the stakes are so high. every little thing of who's mm. getting what solo and who's doing the arrangement and it's like it feels like life or death. Now in retrospect, it's so silly to think that like we cared so much, but it's like formative you know yeah. as a yeah. young artist you need something that you care so that's much about that's all your so. world is about too yeah. during that time totally. yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah forged in the fires yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean maybe there's something to say about with st- or learning to partner in that type of high stress setting oh yeah Absolutely. and how much that maybe is like because eventually your relationship evolves to a point where you want to you decided you wanted to become fathers and that's like yeah. the ultimate test of how to work together well, I think we've, <laughs> we've, sure. we've worked together in so many different ways now over the last <clears throat> 15 years you yeah. know yeah. <laughs> um yeah as 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 performers as as colleagues business partners and, and now as yeah. dads and i mean i think in a lot of ways parenting is in some ways a creative collaboration you know mm-hmm. you are you are creating a world for this person and an experience so it's like yeah there's some of the language that you develop being creative partners i think Mm. transfers over to parenting to some extent yeah i'm pretty selective when it comes to my hair products because my hair is one of the things i invest the most time and money in also i actually really just love my hair so i need to take good care of it i recently was back in la for some abg recordings and decided to try out some new hair products from way I've used their scalp and body scrub before and fell in love with the scent, so I want to try out their other hair products as well. So I got their detox shampoo to try, and wow, it did not disappoint. Just for context, I used the shampoo after a filming session, and while my hair looked good for the shoot, it actually was full of product. My scalp usually has buildup from the amount of dry shampoo I've used. I have hairspray and oil and there's just a lot but this detox shampoo got rid of everything and left my hair feeling super refreshed and clean it also smells incredible i will never say enough good things about the smell of Waze products after i got the shower and towel dried my hair i ended my hair routine with Waze leave-in conditioner and it removed all my tangles leaving my hair super slick I can't say enough good things about Way, and I truly recommend their products to anyone looking to elevate their hair routine. Wash your way to healthier hair with shampoos and conditioners made just for you. Go to T H E O U A I dot com and use code ABG for fifteen percent off your entire purchase. That's T H E O U A I dot com code ABG. At what point in your relationship did you both decide that you want wanted to become fathers? I, I'm sure we talked about it pretty early. Yeah. It's, it, mm. I think I've always known I wanted to wanted to be a father and wanted to have kids. Yeah. I, you know, I think it was something that was really important to the same. To I both think the fact us. that we knew early on that that was something that was in both of our minds, mm. I, you know, was was a prerequisite. I think for <laughs> continuing on dating yeah. and having yeah. a successful relationship. So yeah. So we always knew in in the back of our minds that that would eventually yeah be something. Yeah. We wanted to well, share. because this episode is coming around out around Father's Day, we did want to bring you on to share your more unique experience about being fathers. You yeah. know, because we do live in a world that is traditionally more heteronormative, right, with parenting and and that seems to be the status quo. But what are some of the unique experiences that you both have as fathers to a beautiful daughter, oh. a beautiful three-year-old? <laughs> She's know. gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, you, yeah, you know what it's like. I mean, it's it's just the best thing ever. I think we have so much fun be, being dads and, and watching Aliyah grow every day is such a 
I mean, it's cliche, but it is such a magical experience. Oh, it's, yeah, it's so, so special to just, right, create a, a world for someone and, and introduce her to everything that, that you care about, see what she cares about, what she's yeah. excited about. Um, and yeah, doing it with someone that you just trust implicitly and just have this this language with is yeah. is such a joy and such a yeah. uh, such a gift for us certainly are there any like challenges or mm -hmm. you know with being sort of two fathers to a daughter in in this day and age yeah i mean i think it's you know we definitely want to surround her with powerful incredible women in her life so that she has has role models in in, in that sense yeah i mean i think you know, in a lot of ways, where we live and just our group of friends, yeah. we, we are, you know, never really feeling in our day to day life any kind of stigma around being two dads. If anything, I think we often say this, I think especially as two dads, mm -hmm. you get a lot of benefit of the doubt and extra praise because, mm -hmm. you know, dads, oh, you're two dads. It's so great. I think the, the bar for women is so much higher mm -hmm. in terms of being judged I, as a I've parent. I've thought about that a lot. Just, just I, you know, it's given me so much respect for moms out there and and how you know the expectations that society places on on mothers and on mm. and on i mean on all parents you know of course but 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 you do kind of people are are i think extra generous with with dads yes <laughs> so i think it's true in straight that relationships too yeah. you know seeing a dad out at the park with their kids they immediately get like oh points for yeah. like for you know just yeah. being there and and you know showing up whereas for moms i think it's just like there's so much more expectation. that is expected so yeah. i think to some extent sure in the world there is you know judgment and homophobia for for two dads but at the same time i think we've noticed a lot of you know kind of we benefit a little bit from the fact that oh, there's I never the bar is lower that. for that. <laughs> the bar is um, lower for y'all. You know? <laughs> Which, of course, we still are being right. the best parents we can. But, yeah. but yeah, you do you do get a little, you know, extra. Yeah. I love how you both see sort of like the positive side of it. You're like, yeah. wait, this is great. You know, like, it's we'll take it. if you're surrounding yourself with a community that fully supports you and yeah. supports yeah. your daughter and is just like there for you all. Like, that's the world that she knows and that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's such a beautiful thing always just to think about from your child's perspective, like your life is is the whole is the whole universe, and and yeah. what seems kind of like random or just a series of choices that you know the result of a series of choices that you've made over your life becomes just the reality for mm -hmm. for your kid, and so making mm -hmm. that as beautiful and as interesting and rich as possible, I think is is a constant, you know, yeah. challenge. Yeah, I, a lot, I mean, Eli has so many wonderful, you know, aunties. All of our friends are like <laughs> so just like the best with her and love her so much. And that's been really special yeah. to see yeah. these this group of friends we've cultivated being such a great community for yeah. a, a little kid. Who are some of the powerful women in her life that you mentioned? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Well, we just saw yesterday, we saw Vidya, Vidya Vox. She's like a, mm -hmm. a YouTuber as well, a singer, one of our very good friends. Um, Cassie, who you're mentioning. Okay. Yeah. You know. Our friends, Amy and Nikki. We, we just have a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of amazing, amazing people and, and our families too. I mean, they're on the East Coast, uh, which is, hard you know being away from your extended yeah. family is difficult with a kid but we do a lot of new york trips to grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. um which is good so i hope i think she's becoming a little bit of a new york yeah. kid yeah. also <laughs> you know. okay. how is she on the plane as a three-year-old oh that's a good question oh, yeah. we, <laughs> both her eyes just open up wide <laughs> you see the physical like bracing oh, yeah. 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 Well, you're your experience too but i feel like at three now we've like we've flown enough and we've crossed the hardest part i okay. think i think the yeah. hardest for yeah. us was one to two okay was how, like, how do you feel about how about well flights? i'm uh, i'm going to be taking a solo trip with my son to oh. boston because oh, that's yeah. where i'm from mm -hmm. and i'm scared oh yeah have you flown yet i've flown with him a yeah. few times okay. in all stages of his life yeah. right baby and you know toddler but i always had philip with me right, of course. so he two, yeah, yeah having two two parents around oh, is, it's, is it's very helpful vital. <laughs> i know now now we have the ipad for flights we've tried to like save the ipad just yeah. for flights. planes mm, and sometimes yeah. hair day but yeah but uh <laughs> that that, that has made a big difference because she can just like sit and entertain oh, herself you guys, at the seat. i bought, yeah. I bought headphones weapon. for this yeah oh yeah that's yeah. the intention i'm gonna turn that ipad but, on oh, yeah. but I need it. between one and two i think was impossible there's just nothing was like, there's mm. nothing because Right, they want to get up, they want to move, they don't yet really understand the idea of like, okay, this is a five hour flight and we're yeah. at this point along it. Oh, man. And, and you just can't really communicate that and yet they're not yet right able to be engaged in a, yeah. a book for that long or, yes their attention span is or, so short yeah. so yeah i mean you okay. there were some times you're packing some... a backpack full of like 30 toys each oh, one which sure. will last like three minutes yep. <laughs> every 10 minutes a new snack yeah 
Summer's upon us and you're looking to refresh your wardrobe, huh? Well, I definitely am. It's been heating up really quickly here in Brooklyn. I need to find pieces that can adapt to this new weather I'm living in day and night. Instead of those flimsy fast fashion hauls, spend your money wisely on high quality essentials that will last beyond the season. Quince is my spot for quiet luxury without paying luxury prices. So I actually got gifted Quince's washable silk pajama set and toasted almond by my old roommate Darlene. And it's what put Quince on the map for me. These pajamas are incredibly comfortable and feel super airy. I actually wear them year round and pack these on trips with friends when I want to look, you know, cute yet sociable when we're lounging around. What makes Quince stand out from the rest is their affordable prices for the quality of their products. My silk pajamas could have easily gone for like almost $200, but they're retail for only 60 bucks. And I'm not mad about that. I know you're wondering like, how do they do it? Quince partners directly with top factories to cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings to you. Quince has such a range of products from bedding, silk skirts, Italian leather bags to 14 karat gold jewelry from $30 and on. They literally have everything. And I've been eyeing all their linen products for summer that just dropped. Upgrade your closet this summer with Quince. Right now, go to quince.com ABG to get free shipping and 365 day return turns on your next order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash A-B-G for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash A-B-G. So speaking of um, taking your daughter over to the East Coast, where your family's from, and then also, you know, raising her here on the West Coast, um, both of you also come from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. yeah. as well as she has a different background. Yeah. How are you incorporating each of your cultures as well as her culture into her upbringing? That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, I'm I have Chinese. Um, mm -hmm. My dad's from Hong Kong. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we're definitely doing, you know, Chinese New Year, the lucky money, yeah. making some mooncakes and <laughs> yeah, just, you know, trying to surround her with as much, uh, you know, experience. Those, like, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think like, yeah, as a, in transracial adoption and as a interracial family, there's, there's a lot, you know, that you have to do to, to, to keep a connection to, to all of those, you know, different, yeah. different cultures. So I think, I think for her, for us, it, the, the main the main challenge is just making sure that she's surrounded with with people who who reflect you know a, a variety of mm. of backgrounds and cultures and incorporating that kind of into our into our lives. Yeah. 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 Is there it's anything beautiful. specific to like her background, her culture, also that that you're trying to maintain or uphold? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, uh, you know, we are very lucky to have a, a diverse group of friends and community. But I think, yeah, as she grows up, certainly listening to adult adoptees and our friends who are adoptees, you know, understanding that it's very important to make sure that not only is she surrounded by diversity, but has the opportunity to be in spaces, you know, mm. all black spaces or majority black spaces um, as she gets older. That's something we're yeah. very top of our mind. And um, yeah, yeah I, th I think we've had we've had a journey of of learning. Uh, I mean, learning that all parents do, but also specifically learning about the complexities of adoption and and transracial adoption. And so it's it's sort of a constant journey of, of learning more about that and, and listening to to voices in, in the uh, adoptee community. Yeah, for you know? sure. Yeah. For Always sure. centering adoptee voices and as Aliyah goes up, centering her in every decision and mm -hmm. every approach to parenting. It's, yeah. you know, not about us at all. For sure. I can tell that you're both really intentional about that. We're trying to be, yeah. yeah. I, I also, when you said like, oh, you know, like showing, doing these celebrations, Chinese New Year and whatnot, like even for my son, you know, we're so far removed. I'm so far removed from like the motherland yeah. Yeah. that I do whatever my mom did for me. I'm just like, how did you? Oh, and you have to like research it and learn about it of and like oh relearn it. Well, to, I, to we had a moment at our it. wedding in 2016 where all of Sam's extended family from Hong Kong came and, mm -hmm. all, and all of his cousins. And the night before they were like, hey, so when are we doing the tea ceremony? Oh, the tea ceremony. And we were like, we had a night before. Like, what? Like, what tea ceremony? I was like, Sam Dad, was like, why Dad. didn't you tell me? What do we have to do this? Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's a California gay wedding. I didn't know if you wanted to do that. I was like, of course to, we want to we do that. We ran out and got like all the stuff for it and incorporated wow, it. It ended up being so beautiful. It was great. But yeah. you know, we just weren't wow. thinking yeah. about the teapots, that. The tea. yeah, I mean, it, it's really just the teapots and the tea. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They were like, don't worry, it's pretty chill. You can get any yeah. old teapot and just yeah. pour tea for the yeah. old Did you accept like gold or just, the, was well, that my, what? Yeah, well, all of my relatives had brought the envelopes and things, so they were ready to go. Yeah, right, right, right. So we were the ones catching up. If I just had to get a pillow and some teapot, 
lots. Of, give yes, me your envelopes. Exactly. Yes, I will receive yeah. them gladly. Exactly. <laughs> we're doing the we're doing a, a Mandarin class for her the, for the first time this weekend, <gasps> oh which is going to be gosh. fun. There's like this for a three year old. Oh my I, it's goodness. like Casey speaks yes. Mandarin. I don't. Uh, Casey does. Oh, I, wow. I, stu I studied in college um, and did a did a summer in Beijing, but but I and we you know we read a couple books in, in Chinese with her, but it's like a dance movement class that's taught in oh Chinese. Gosh, I so love I think that. I think it should. Yeah. I'm going to see if she likes it. We're not going to. It's yeah, a, I don't yeah. want to like like pressure, but her. But I think it'd be so cool for so her. Sorry, you didn't tell me where her. this is because I yeah. yeah. My son in, <laughs> I know in that it's class. in Encino, which is like kind of far, well, but it's old. Mandarin art studio. Okay, yeah. okay, that's cool. <laughs> so okay. cool to know that that exists. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Language is definitely something I can't. I can't speak Mandarin. I speak twice in ease, so. <gasps> Right now we're doing cool. English because yeah. yeah 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 of course <laughs> right yeah, basically it's, it's, it's so hard it's yeah. so hard <laughs> what is a favorite moment that you have shared as an interracial family. One that I'm really looking forward to maybe is is going to Hong Kong for the first time. I think that'll be really special. Ooh, you know, obviously okay. that's speaking of flights, that's a long oh yeah, oh, yeah. Flight. I load up about ten ten movies for that. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm really excited for in general international travel. I think is something we've gotten to do a lot as artists and as musicians, and something that we haven't yet explored with Elias. So I think, mm. you know, just raising any kid, I think, is giving them an awareness of just the the global nature of our yes. world and and you know allowing them to understand from a very young age that we are one very small part of a huge rich world full of lots of different culture is um yeah something that's that you know is really important to us and something i'm excited to explore more mm -hmm. with her it's also just been so lovely to see the support online you know from mm -hmm. from people and you know I, th I think we feel um really grateful to have to be representatives of the LGBT community online and to allow, you know, younger gay and queer people to to kind of see our family and yeah. see see us as as, you know, a a, a path in, a, a in, model. in life, a model yeah. of, of how you can, you know, how yeah. you can be. Um so that's you know, that's been really, really nice. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Is that something that you feel like puts a lot of pressure on your family mm. ever? I don't know. I mean, yes, in, in, in some extent. Although I think with with us we we only try to be ourselves and share and share through our music, you know. Yeah, our, yeah the, I, I think the for... fact that that mostly what we're putting out is is our musical content and, and mm -hmm. sort of we can then just live our lives and raise our daughter kind mm -hmm. of as its own, you know, thing is that we're mm -hmm. not too much trying to you know, delve you're not trying to be like a representation. Like, right, right, like this right, is not right. what we're all about. This is just my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're putting yeah, out exactly. music it's as our content. Separate. Yeah, that allows any any of our life that does kind of come through is just very authentic and, and yeah. it's not we're not trying too hard to pr project or present anything for sure specific for sure. Um, for sure. yeah I don't know about you, but it feels like a lot of my friends are now getting on that baby train. If you have a friend who is also expecting or have little ones still in diapers, I always recommend Pampers Swaddlers. With Pampers Swaddlers, you can also rest assured that this diaper will prevent up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. Swaddlers has dual leak guard barriers at the legs to help protect where leaks happen most. And they have a blowout barrier, which is an innovative back pocket built into the diaper to help prevent those messy leaks up the back. Did you know that on average, babies will use up to 8,000 plus diapers before for becoming potty trained, that is a lot. That's why Pampers Diaper Stash is the hottest baby gift for 2024. So give a gift to a loved one that says, we see you and we've got you. Pampers Diaper Stash is an online diaper fund that all parents with little ones will love. You can organize friends and family to contribute to a group gift of an online stockpile that never has to run out. Pampers Diaper Stash is great because it takes the guesswork out of choosing what size and how many diapers to gift. It's so easy to do and it's the gift that always fits. So in in society, we hear a lot about this term, girl dad. Uh -huh. Of course. I'm curious for each of you, how do you define being a girl dad? Like, what does that mean to you? I mean, I just love it. I think it's so yeah. it's so fun. Obviously, like you know, any any parenting experience is is like is so fun. But just getting to engage with her and all the things that she loves and and support her creativity and her strength as a as as a girl. I just think mm -hmm. that's so it's 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 so rewarding and so. And so enjoyable. Yeah, I think it's 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 so rewarding to to even at her really young age just watch the ways in which she feels in control and empowered. Mm. You know, obviously as a toddler, sometimes you're like, there are tired. There yeah. to have a little yeah. too much power. <laughs> yes, but no, she runs the show. <laughs> yeah, and it's so it's just so wonderful to be able to celebrate that and and mm. watch her 
already move through the world in a way in which she feels important and valued and um, just continuing that and, yeah. you know, hopefully just all straight through adulthood, letting her feel that, yeah, just sense of self. Yeah. Um, it's so fun to get to help foster that yeah. and and encourage that and it's, and it's so amazing watching that develop from a from a baby like all, mm -hmm. like all of a sudden she just has these like deep like feelings and and interests yeah. and and you know passionate e extreme <laughs> moments <laughs> that are moments yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah what are some of the things that she's loving right now oh my gosh oh my god well she loves a dance party moment, putting oh. on some we good do a music lot and jamming of around. Sing along dance parties in the living room at okay. night. Yeah, is we, she is she also singing along? Too? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, we're we're waiting for the point at which she's like, stop singing. I, yeah. Actually, we've already gotten she that. She tells a us bit. to stop singing sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, stop. <laughs> enough. Enough. Well, I get that hand all the time too. Yeah. It's yeah. like, stop walking. Like, yeah. pick me up. Stop talking. I'm right. Like, or if, if we're talking to friends, she'll be like, stop talking. Yes. She wants, you know, her. She needs to be the focus. For some reason, they always talk when we're talking to someone else. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're just like, listen to me. Instead. Yeah. Right, right, right. Oh, but it's just so fun. Like, as she's talking more, just like hearing the ideas come out and just these... Yeah. Just pure, hilarious, you know, we, uh, it's great. We went to Disneyland for the first time a couple, last month, and saw, she loves turning red and oh, Mei Mei yes. and the Red Panda, and so she got to meet Mei Mei and at the little for meet the, and greet line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They especially had them as characters. It was like a three-hour line to wait for it, so we, we went with our friends and their and their daughter as well and we all the adults just all took turns waiting in oh, this like God. line we were like we had talked up like we're going now because we're we get to see Mei Mei, Mei, Mei and yeah. and her mom and then when we got there they were like it's a three-hour line it's like we cannot there's no way yeah. we told her can we yeah, 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 right. so we, we cannot you know let them down so we have to make it happen <laughs> yeah. somehow and, and yes, did they, she love that moment she loved it oh, oh my god so great so fun it was so you guys great. are living for her and i love that yeah you see that in your like expression your eyes yeah total girl dad yes Oh, for, sure. for sure. Um, as musicians and creatives, you both are creatives. What are certain like values that you want to instill into your daughter, and how do you incorporate that into oh, her that, day to day? That's such a great question. I think freedom of self expression and creativity are so important. Yeah. I just I just want her to always be able to express how she feels loudly and and you know with intention in the yeah. world. I think that's so. I important. also you know I think as as adult creatives, there's always the walking the line between when you're art and what you do is also your career mm -hmm. that sometimes though that it can get a little muddy of finding mm -hmm. the joy mm -hmm. in what you make we don't want and music and dance and all this stuff to ever color that with a sense of like our anxieties as mm. our entertainment professionals with that right. so always mm -hmm. keeping the you know focused on the joy with her when it comes to art expression creativity yeah. never letting her think about oh daddies do this for work and for money and like <laughs> yeah, all yeah. of those things yeah, 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 letting yeah. that just stay pure for her that that yeah. creation is fun because even as adults that's what you're chasing and you want to nurture and hold on to as much as possible is yeah. the spark of joy that you find for in sure. in whatever artistic or creative pursuit you have for which sure. can be difficult to to maintain so yeah. Yeah. letting her yeah just have yeah. Fun it's like when she's old enough, you two will be able to guide her through yeah. all of that. Yes, yeah. yes. She yeah. doesn't need to be aware of any of that. <laughs> exactly. Yet, exactly. To hold exactly. her back. Yeah. I mean, I'm also curious because you two, I mean, you both went to Yale, right? Like college as an institution. Oh my gosh. What if she wants to grow up and be like, I'm I want to pursue music and not go to college? Like, how would you yeah. both feel about that? You know, I think always and you know, ask us in 10 years, I don't know, but I, <laughs> in thinking about that, like our sense is just like the happiness of your child is paramount to anything. And, you know, mm -hmm. as long as she's safe and happy, like what, you know, whatever she wants to do truly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, having done, having gone to like a competitive high school and yeah. then, and then the stress of college mm -hmm. admissions, I don't necessarily need her to have that, no. that kind of anxiety throughout mm -hmm. adulthood that, 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 that comes it from that experience. You. Yeah. It stays with you. It stays with you, for sure. Yeah. 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 Yale was wonderful, but I, I don't think it's like a prerequisite for success mm. to go to a great of university. Not. It's It was yeah. an awesome experience and we have so many wonderful friends and communities from there, but like you can, you can find meaning and success and great joy through any one of a I million think different especially paths. now there are so many role models of, of, of success through so many different 
paths. You, yeah. There's not like one path you have to yeah. take to become a successful person. So if she if she wants to go to Yale, we will we will be right there with her, yeah. helping her with everything she needs. If she doesn't, we will be right there with her. Yeah, all the same, I think. Yeah. Oh, you know? that's beautiful. I love to hear that. That's such a, such an open minded and supportive uh, perspective to take. Yeah. My son wants to drive garbage trucks all day long right oh, now. Oh, yeah. So I would support that. <laughs> yeah. If, you know, you make a good damn business out yeah. of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the appeal of those garbage trucks on kids. Oh, it, yeah. It's got a chokehold on it, them it all. Really it, does. it really does. Literally, <laughs> instead of like going partying this on weekends, I'm like, where are the garbage trucks? Yeah. <laughs> like, where's, <laughs> where's a pet garbage truck? Like, where can we find one of those? Is your daughter being, is she drawn to any particular like art form right now more so than the others? She she loves drawing and she loves singing. Yeah, yeah, D dance. dancing. She, dancing. she's That's been what, saying why we're excited about this. Yeah, class. she's been saying she wants to it's start a dance been class. Free form up to this point, oh, but yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, um, is that the first like class that you're putting her in? We did like like a uh, baby gymnastics. Uh, did you do oh, any of that? like no. like? I mean, gymnastics is loose. It's just kind of rolling around, which was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Alaya is now about three years old, right? You said yeah. so. She's speaking and she's starting to sing. Yeah. Um, do you anticipate sometime in the future that she might start to ask a few questions, maybe about your family structure, and how do you think about helping to support her and understanding different types of family structures that are out in the world? Absolutely, yeah. I think that's that's a great question, and I mean, I think we have friends. Um, we we are we have friends in families that look very different you know we have mm -hmm. lots of different models of, of what families yeah, can I look think like a lot of that starts from you know day mm -hmm. zero just what they're surrounded with you know in yeah. what they see in your community and also i do think there's a lot of wonderful media now whether it's children's mm. books or tv shows you know there is a lot more normalization representation. and representation yeah. Yeah. um and so that's wonderful i think you know even kids in her daycare are probably that, that don't have these sort of quote unquote non-traditional family structures are seeing that yeah. around. So I, yeah. I, the hope is that it won't necessarily feel for her abnormal, yes. you know, in any way. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to be living in a time when that is but I think, more and more so the case. I think case. for that and, and for so many other things, just having the openness of communication at, at any time is, is so important that yeah. we that we know, like, she can always ask us questions about anything. We yeah. can always talk about anything. Well, I think is, a, you know, yeah. our goal. Yeah, for sure. I would want you to both meet my dad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you need to talk to my Asian dad right now. Oh, God. <laughs> want that kind of love. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to, say, other same-sex couples that are out there who might be watching that might be considering parenthood? Some advice that you could give to them. Oh, I mean, I just think parenthood as a journey is has has so many different challenges, no matter which way you're approaching it. Of course. Um, and I would say to just embrace that journey yeah. uh, and, and allow... It to happen in in whatever way it you know it, it does it does for you but I you know I think we've had you know we've had such an amazing time being parents and and but just watching all of our friends and, and the different ways that they've you know they've they've built their families and it's you know there's a a lot of a lot of challenges no matter yeah. no matter how you do it yeah and I think just remembering that you know at the end of the day parenting and parenthood is not about you you know it's it's about your your child and approaching mm -hmm. every decision and and every sort of step along the way with that in mind that that mm -hmm. that it's it's really not for you it's yeah. for this this child and yeah. um that is kind of like a Hopefully, we try to have that be a guiding principle yeah. in the way we we approach parenthood. But we're still very much learning too. Oh <laughs> my know, gosh! I don't, think, I don't think we are positioned a, as experts in anything. Not at all. But but also, it's uh, all of that being said, it's so joyful and it's so wonderful, and and we are so grateful to be parents and, yeah. and um, yeah. there's it's so kind of like you can't really put too much expectation on it because you mm. kind of just have to go with the flow of yeah. so much you can't have mm. too much control over it right, right. is what i'm also hearing yeah yeah and i think and every kid is process. different and every family is different yeah. and the mm. the you know the the dynamic that that comes up in your family and the way you know what your kids need from you there's like kind of no way to know to be willing to happens, adapt right yeah, yeah. Yes. of course oh yes yes <laughs> that's where you find happiness let go of control yeah. just be okay be with it all it's kind of liberating too that's you know true. that's definitely a mantra that i need yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> which which uh between the two of you who do you feel like is better at like letting go of control and being flexible Ooh. me yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
probably <laughs> you. But but right, like <laughs> coming from a creative realm where, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a control freak totally. It, it mm. is has been a lesson in a little bit just letting yeah, go, and know. and that's yeah. a good. It's it's liberating. It's a good thing. Yeah. But um. I mean, you know, yeah. when you're when you're producing your own your own content and creating your own business, it's like you you put so you do have to like have have a role in so many different parts of it. So I think that's yeah. where that, that yes. comes from. Yes, of course. Of <laughs> Bad course. cop, good cop. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, I think it depends. We're on both this. like pushover good cops. I know. <laughs> I, know I know. We're like sometimes we're no, like we're... skirt the line. Is this permissive parenting? No, <laughs> no, no, just kidding. We, we, we like we try to stick to like routine and have have structure, mm. but. Alaya is very persuasive and she's a good negotiator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A good arguer. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. she, you know, she she gets I feel I feel she... that way with my two year old. I'm like, why am I thinking as if I'm talking to an adult how to like strategically get <laughs> around know. your get you to do the thing and, that I want you to do? And they're so smart. She it's finds so the smart. loophole oh, or yeah. the the like logical fallacy in your <laughs> yeah, reasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You create a boundary. Like, with why like, is the TV not working? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I went we both went to Yale. We can't like we can't no. control the street. She runs circles She's around smart, us. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. <laughs> well, now we want to talk a little bit about a book that you just published. Yes. You recently worked on and published a children's book called um, Why Do We Sing? Yes. yes. And it is all about the beauty and importance of singing all around the world, why people do it, the benefit it brings to their lives. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we have, of course, recently become immersed in children's media and yeah. books and watching things with Aliyah. And so so we kind of knew we wanted to create something that spoke to what we love and what we care about and what we want to impart into, you know, Aliyah's world. And um, kind of to the point of what I was saying earlier that for, you know, we want kids to see music and singing as not just something that is like a, a career and singing on stage and performing, even though that's like, that can be a really fun, rewarding part of singing. There are so many you know facets to vocal music it's cultural mm -hmm. it's it's community building it's all this stuff so that's really what the book is about it's it's the why do we sing and it's not just to yeah. you know make a living or to entertain people there's so many beautiful yeah so reasons. the text of the book kind of focuses on the why's and then sam's illustrations are a tour of all of these amazing glo global vocal music traditions yeah so we got some k-pop some gospel some mariachi bollywood some peking yeah. opera yeah <laughs> we have the book here Ooh. so i bought this for my son <gasps> and it is so cute okay oh, question because i know there's an accompany accompanying um like music album to this? yeah album yeah. to this yes yeah. So I tried to sing this to him as I was reading it for the first time. <laughs> That's where he held his hand up. He said, stop. stop. Oh. He said, stop. Because it was clear that I wasn't doing the right thing. But I will say, like, Sam illustrated this. Okay. Multi-talented. Thank you. Hello. When I saw your name on this, I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Sam, Sam, can you see Sam again? Yeah. Like, what? This is so gorgeous. Thank you. And what I love also is, like, there's these kind of, like, where's Waldo moments. Yeah. But yes. very obvious where you are. Yes. Right? Yes. Too hard. You don't yes. have to look too hard. too hard. With us and our cat Alfie. Yeah. Alfie's always hiding somewhere in the in the illustration. I oh. love that. So <laughs> a little Easter egg. Yeah. yeah. I would ask oh, my son, cute. like, where's the cat? Yeah. Or, you know, and then he would like find it. And so this is such a cute, Thank cute, you. cute book. Thank like you. truly. I, I love this book. The illustrations illustrations are incredible. Thank you. Yeah, and we really just wanted it to be something that for kids very young to older is just an introduction to the huge world of vocal music. You know, every yeah. culture throughout all of time has sung. There's a reason it resonates with us as And as also singing is for everybody. It's not just for professionals. It's yeah. something that we yeah. all are meant to, to do in some way in our lives. Yeah. I and, and I think more and more with social media, kids see other people singing and it, it, there's maybe, it's a little daunting, you know, like, oh, if I want to uh, sing, it's, it's only I can't sing like the high notes or right. riff or, you know. But this is just saying that like, it's just, okay it's to fun. be it's yeah. fun and perfect it's, at it or yeah. whatever. That and we had a lot of fun working on the companion album, which is all songs inspired by those different music traditions. Yeah. So we so have an opera inspired song, a mm. K pop inspired song, a Bollywood inspired song. And it's, um yeah, it's fun. So it's like, you know, it's not the text of the book, it's each just kind of. A companion, so okay. you can okay, listen to okay. them. They're, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll still I'll keep also trying to sing. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. book in particular. Then, when you were um, illustrating and and 
writing yeah. this book. Obviously, it's it's the the three of you, right, and your cat. So the four of you. This to me, if I were to pick this up, I'd be like, oh, this is such a good book for just diverse families and different types of family structures, right? Is that something that you were thinking of, or were you kind of just like, this is just my family? I just want to put it out there. I think so. Yeah, I mean, a little I mean, bit of both. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of both. But I, I think we wanted the the representation to to feel natural, and it's not. You know, the the book is about the the beauty and universality of and we singing. Just, we and just our, happen to be the family yes. that is on each page witnessing. We're really not the main characters of this book. It's really these different singing traditions yeah. and, and vocalists. And so, right, it just felt very natural to say, oh, it's this could be any family just kind of going through these pages and watching. It just happens to be ours. And, and right, like that's the kind of representation that I think resonates with us is just representation that feels really just real <laughs> and yeah. authentic yeah. and, yeah, yeah not, not trying to be anything more than just who we are yeah i mean we also wrote and we'll give this book to you later like a lucky cat book where yeah. it's also just spreading like our culture and it's just something that's just so natural and innate to us but i think it's so important to have representation in children's books because literally yes. this is what they know this yes. is their entire and world we read this book yeah. many many times yeah. you know and i will eventually learn how to sing it <laughs> <laughs> well but like this is what you know they this is the world that they form around them yeah, yeah absolutely no, children's, children's books so have important. a lot of power i'm so excited yeah. to read yours i know <laughs> Here, we signed it <laughs> for y'all. Awesome. I want you to sign this for myself oh as well. Of course. <laughs> so curious, you covered, um, or you just talked about all of the different songs that are in the book. Is yeah. there one that stands out to you particularly, or maybe you're, that your daughter is like really drawn to as a Ooh, favorite? Which one well, does she like? Well, there's one called The Greatest Ever Campfire Song Aww. that is um, inspired by, you know, as we said, singing is communal. Like yeah, one of yeah. our earliest memories is often sitting around a campfire, mm. you know, singing the song together. So um, yes, I think by the time this episode's coming out, there's going to be a music video for that as well. <gasps> oh, wow. um, and it's fun. It, yeah, it, and there's a there's a bear that appears in the song that Aliyah yeah. really likes. Yeah, She's yeah, yeah. She was Aliyah was a great uh, beta tester for all this music. Oh, you yeah. know, <laughs> she'd go to daycare, we'd work on a song during the day, and we'd play it for her, and we'd see like what. What resonated she what to? she yeah, did yeah. not care for <laughs> um so that that is helpful working on kids music to have an authentic two and a half yeah. year old there yeah. to yeah. you know give you honest unfiltered feedback and she, so, she has two little cameos on the album too Aww. she has one little spoken yeah. line in the first song and, and yeah. another in the last so she track. likes the campfire song and she also like there's a bollywood inspired song that we did with uh, vidya vox our, okay. our good friend yeah that's uh, called sunye that she also likes that because she's like oh my auntie's on this song oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. i think a Aya does think that every adult has like an album or CD out because they have so many oh, music friends. Yeah. She'll be like, I want to listen to Uncle Dylan's song. And I'm that's like, he, so doesn't have, he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have. He doesn't do that. Music, but she just assumes that everyone's yeah. got a, of course, an EP you know? out. You know? I'll record oh. mine of this book. I should yeah, be like, never please. mind. <laughs> never mind. Not all adults can sing. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> We do have a speed round that okay. we're gonna oh we're gonna get through. Okay, here we go. First question: If you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, 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 Celine Dion. That's the way it is. Ooh. Uh, uh, Whitney Houston singing the national anthem. Oh my god! <laughs> I was just oh, thinking about that one. last night. <laughs> that's oh literally gosh. the best. I guess the that's best. like yeah, just one one vocal performance that yeah. I would just yeah. I could hear yeah. infinitely. Yes. Oh, well, yes, both yes. of those are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> if you could collaborate with any artist, dead or alive, who would it be? I mean, Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Celine Dion. That's not, no. Celine Dion, you know, no, okay. Know. Oh, it's so hard. I know it's a lightning round, so I can't get like too deep into thinking hey, about you, it. You but can. yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, yeah. A great singer. A great, a great, vocalist. A great vocalist. Yeah, yeah. of okay. the past. Yeah. <laughs> and what about, what is your go-to karaoke song? Um... I like a share moment Ooh. because, you know, it's power ballads, but it's a little lower. You know, it's like I can really belt those notes mm. out. Yeah. Like, do we, you believe in uh, life, life after, after love? love? Solid. That's yeah. a good one. These are such gay answers. <laughs> Celine Dion, Cher, <laughs> Whitney Houston. Oh, Lord. We do a good, like, uh, Disney, like, karaoke duet, too. Like, we, oh, we could do... Uh, oh. uh, What's uh, Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Right, right. Whole new world. Whole new world. Those, Whole new yeah. world. Those yeah, are yeah, obviously yeah. like, yeah, cr you know, crowd, crowd pleasers. pleasers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> Best era of music, in your opinion? Oh. I mean, like, I feel like a lot of people, millennials, it's like that, that like late '90s pop, yeah. '90s pop R and B boy bands. Like, that's obviously strikes a chord. I don't mm. know if that's the best era of music ever. I mean, yeah. Mo the Motown era, mm. that, like that's yeah. like '60s, '60s, '70s. That's that's kind of hard to to beat too. All right, and now, would you rather 
have people hear your thoughts or have everything you do live streamed? <gasps> It's very invasive. But. Everything I do live stream. <laughs> Everything I do live stream. Oh. I don't want either of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just feel thoughts. like hearing your thoughts would be crazy. That's a little creepy. My yeah, thoughts are creepy. too chaotic. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like I'm thinking bad things about people. I just, it's too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, live stream. I take the live stream. Yeah. What okay. about you guys? I want to know your answer Ooh. to that. I would probably do live stream live too because my thoughts are also yeah. crazy yeah, chaotic. Yeah. No, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, sorry for the person. I'm like, I'm sorry. You can stop anytime. How about you? Live stream? Live stream. Okay. Definitely. Don't want that. Yes, yes. But I'll it's take the lesser it of two evils. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, would you rather carpool karaoke with Celine Dion mm. or Carly Rae Jepsen? Was this a question already? Yes. Oh man, <laughs> Celine. Celine. I, I love Carly, love Carly Rae Jepsen too, yeah, yeah. But, but Celine. Celine. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was probably no competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we saw her in Vegas many years ago, and it was like a transformative, so like a spiritual oh, experience. So I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, she's her voice is just amazing. Iconic. Yeah, amazing. Are you guys Swifties? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And Alaya is. Alaya saw. Like an ad for the Aris the Eras tour, tour on, Disney Plus. on Disney Plus at a cabin. She was like, "I want to watch that." Mm. And we went home and we watched it. And she, she was like, it. "She loved it." Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh All right. Favorite favorite genre of music to sing? Uh, like an '80s power ballad. Mm, that's good. Um, you know, I actually really like singing jazz. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that it's it's just really fun. It, yeah, yeah, jazz standards. Yeah. I, I think that kind of you can express yourself have you done any like jazz club type? my dad is a pianist at like a piano bar in new york like bo peep. called bo peep like six nights oh, a week he's wow. playing so whenever we're in town That's we so always cool. go i mean he does everything 90s jazz swing but yeah but yeah i i've sung a lot with him oh my there. goodness musically <laughs> talented family favorite instrument cello oh mm. oh the cello is beautiful it's so beautiful it? i don't yeah. play i i've i always at some point in my life, I'm going to learn cello. Maybe like in retirement. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think, I think it's as, most... a, as a singer, all like string bowed instruments are so vocal in the way. Okay, that but that they're... was my answer. What do okay. you pick for you? <laughs> <laughs> piano, versatile. We write everything on piano. Mm. I play keys. That's just you know, it's a it's a solid yeah, yeah. workhorse. <laughs> all right, cello and piano. Favorite book. Ooh. Like I don't have time to read. I'm <laughs> That's really hard. We we read a lot. We read a okay. lot. We're yeah. big readers. Um, I I would say like. My stock, like high school answer was like East of Eden. I loved that book, mm -hmm. like a classic. Recently, I really, we both really liked um, Parable of the Sower and Parable of yeah. the Talents, which are like mm -hmm. sci-fi, dystopian. Mm -hmm. um, we both, we just finished the Three Body Problem trilogy, Chinese. which now is a, now is a series on yes. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We like sci-fi, we like classics and like, really cool speculative sci-fi yeah. sci yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being here with us today, oh Sam gosh. and Casey. Thanks for having um, us. It was amazing to listen to your story. It's really beautiful to watch both of you evolve in your careers as content yeah. creators, as singers, as writers, and it's very inspiring to also witness how you parent because you do it so thoughtfully. Yeah. Um, but thinking of this upcoming year, is there anything that you're particularly excited about? Ooh, I mean, you know, our our book, Why Do We Sing, and, and the album really was so much fun to work on. And so we're excited to do more kids content. It's, yeah. it's so rewarding. And, you know, with the launch of the book, we, we played at some schools and played for kids. Oh, my God. Like Playing music for kids is so fun. We we did a like a school tour and just played for like kindergarten through third oh. graders. And we're like compared to doing like artist sets on tour. It's just yeah. there's something so sweet and, and beautiful about singing for kids. So I hope we get to do some more touring with our with our kids album. That'd be yeah. really, really yeah. fun. Oh. <laughs> Does your daughter ever go with you? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at our book, book event, events. she's come up and on you know on stage and, with and us she's, and... yeah oh my god she loves it again she now whenever we go to like a Barnes and Noble she's like are you gonna sing no uh, <laughs> did, like, oh, like, Barnes and Noble events <laughs> right the Americana Barnes and Noble is and I was like not today we're yet. just shopping <laughs> today <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like the sweetest oh. where can our listeners get a copy of this book mm. everywhere books are sold you can get it on Amazon or Har from the HarperCollins website Barnes and Noble any, or, yeah, any or bookstore. local bookstores Barnes and Noble it should be on the shelves and the album's and streaming everywhere Spotify Incredible. It's also called Why Do We Sing? Yep. Album. Yeah. And where can our listeners find you? Oh, any old place. <laughs> Look up uh, Casey Breva, Sam Shuey. We're on TikTok. We do a lot of fun series on TikTok, uh, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube of, course. of course, the OG. And, yeah. I haven't posted on X in a while. I think that's no. the only one, the only place <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I posted for like three found. days and then I, I <laughs> yeah. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you would want to share with our listeners before we conclude today's oh, episode? Oh, this was, this was such a such a delightful experience. Thank you so much for having us. We're just so so happy to be here and get to, yeah. to share this with you. Yeah, this was awesome. 
Yeah, this was great. Thank you so much. We appreciate you both so much for sharing your story and for being here with us today. Thanks. Well, happy Father's Day, everyone. And with that, we will catch you all on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Before we wrap up, a reminder that you can access a more premium experience of this show by becoming an ABG bestie, where you'll get our new audio episodes ad-free, discounts and early access to merch, special shout-outs at the end of our shows, and we're bringing back Dear ABG, our monthly personal AMA sessions. You all are the reason why we make the show and are able to keep it going. If you want to support us more and connect with us further, you can check out the description notes for how to sign up. Hope you will join us and become an ABG bestie. Chat with you on the inside.